Ho, ho, ho. Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Santa Claus, also known as Scott Wheeler. Today's guests are two distinguished figures, Santa 1 and Santa 2. We're, we're here today to talk to these two men about why they are Santa, how, the, how their journey to becoming Santa occurred. To the left, the far left, is Winston Carboneau, and the middle is Gene Tessier. Between them, they have decades of performing the role of Santa Claus. And thank you, thank you, Winston, for uh, giving me hair. Hey, I have hey. not looked like this. Actually, I can't grow a beard. I just can't. But I once had hair. It wasn't, yeah, it was, you know, it was about this long, too. It wasn't white. So it, it was great having you on. Um, Winston, uh, how many years did you play Santa? I played Santa just maybe 25, 25, 25 years. And uh, you're, are you a newcomer, Gene, yeah, to the I role am. of Santa? I am. I am. I started doing it when I started driving bus. Right. And uh, uh, do you have any words of wisdom? Uh, Winston to the newcomer on the block of playing Santa. Oh, oh, oh. he make a good one too. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, playing the Santa. Don't scare the kids. We had another Santa Claus when I was playing Santa Claus with you, where the um, <coughs> Chevrolet place isn't it? Yeah. Anyways. And uh, the kid there across the street come running across over to where I was. Are you afraid of the other Santa? And so the mother said, he's not really afraid of that Santa. I said, you got to play that part when you're going to play it because you don't, they're going to run there scared. You're in a uniform and you got to make them reach in that back. Give them a little candy pop something. Did you ever it, scare anybody, though? No, I didn't scare them off. Tell me this. Have you ever had any uh, good-looking women sit in your lap, though? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> when I used to play Santa Claus on the main street, the worst place you can sit in the middle of the, by your back, you know, and these ladies come up and they sit on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> And then they look at me and say, you okay, Santa? I said, ho, 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 ho. You go to know it, ho, ho. What has your experiences been, Santa Eugene? It's been different. I mean, like you said, not to scare the kids. I had, you know, I mean, I rode the bus there once at Santa, and uh, one little girl came to get on the bus, and when she saw me, she ran right back in the house. <laughs> You know, I mean, she wouldn't get on the bus. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I didn't know. You know, I, I guess some kids get scared and some don't. Get, but no, it's true, yes. It's, uh, it's different. Yeah. It's different. Right. You like got, you say, it's to make them believe. Yeah, that's it. You just got to make that child believe in it and talk nice. And you got a rough voice or something. <laughs> He's going to be scared. He's going to get away from you. Now, what year did you start playing Santa, Winston? I started playing Santa when I was in uh, Vietnam. <laughs> and then I started by uh, people calling me up my house and wanting to know if I played Santa. Right. So I go to their house on the Glen Road for one of them. <laughs> you get off at a drink, drink the whole drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you said one day, one morning, Santa had a big old hangover. Well, what happened was, I played Santa Claus so many times, and when you get down on the gun road, of course, everybody knows Santa. Have a, have a little one. No, I can't have one, Santa. <laughs> By the time I hit that third one, I got in my vehicle and started 
back home. I pulled into the gas station. Hey, Larry Letourneau, what? Come down there and pick me up. I don't get to drive. <laughs> it, boy, I tell you, you just can't. Yeah. They're going to keep passing you. And, and you said your little one, that little one catches up with you. <laughs> I, I bet you, knowing how long you've been doing this, I probably sat on your lap as a kid. Cause, you and, uh, have. and I bet you the producer of this show did too, Todd Pronto. <laughs> Now, yeah. if I went over there and sat on your lap or on your lap now, could, will, will, will you make my wishes come true? I'd like well, to win we, the mega box. We'll, we'll try, won't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you got to believe. Yeah. <laughs> believe in Santa. Yep. All right, yeah. well, why don't we now take off these hot things, yeah. and we will show the world what Santa looks like Ooh. underneath. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, Big look, mistake. Huh? Here I am as a bald, and here I am once again, a bald guy. Hey, look at here. Hey. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and this one. <sighs> so now that Santa Winston is gone, and Santa uh, Jean Jeez. is gone, we now have just Winston... And Gene, now I know you go by about half dozen names. You go Cabby. by Winston, Cabby, Joe, and there's probably another few names in there somewhere. And, and a few others. Probably some you can't. Cabby. Yeah. And probably some when you were a police officer, you can't even repeat on the air. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, more on the serious side, I've been wanting to get both of you on the show last year. Actually, a year or two ago, you were on talking about your life as Santa. But yeah. then I've been seeing Gene's been, uh, Gene's been coming out of the woodwork, and he's been Santa. And he's also known uh, for probably having the highest electrical bill in, uh, in Derby during the Christmas season. Now, why do I say that? I don't know. I only got 10000 Five hundred lights. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're big into Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. And uh, but the reason you know I might think, well, these are just two guys who are playing Santa. What's what's the big deal? Well, I I looked at the, the parallel nature of your lives is uh, um, the one thing you both have in common. You're both combat veterans of Vietnam. Yes. And uh, and and I just found it interesting because you know let's be real is your generation of veterans are often maligned in the news and when I have it, the deepest respect for both of you yeah. and, uh, and and I think you're really the face of the Vietnam veteran not mm -hmm. the face that the news or Hollywood wants to put to it I think I think your generation goes above and beyond and I think you two play in Santa because yeah. neither one of you are paid are you no nope. No, I don't get paid. No, I don't get paid. A lot of the people swept ship on the Elton Hill Road. And uh, they found out one day I was on my deck. Yeah. And I had my Santa Claus suit on. Just standing there, people were playing a kid. And I just, ho, ho, ho. Well, pretty soon that ho, ho, ho got around on the Elton Hill Road. Then the parents. Yeah, and every house down the road give me a call. Would you mind coming and play Santa over here? My folks are going to be here. That was the great part. That's a good part. And then you go in, you've got to play this part where the older people sitting there. I go up and see the old gal. And she's probably about 1995. And I said, ho, oh, oh, ho, I remember you when you did song. <laughs> and she say, I bet you did, Santa. <laughs> you know, you, you play the part. You have a good time on that. Right. So tell me, uh, Winston, we've talked about this before with you, is your defining moment in performing Santa was you were out in the bush. Uh, what part of Vietnam were you in? When you were there? I was in the 1965-1966 uh, and I went back in 68-69. But playing Santa over there and helicopters coming in, you got to get the place ready for Santa to land because he don't get you. <laughs> right. But anyway, that's when we started. It was but really but nice. when you, you didn't know when, when uh, at first, I think uh, when at first when you, 
you didn't when you had to make a perimeter did you know santa was coming or at first or did you think it was a member of the brass no it didn't at first we didn't just thought it was it was not santa until he got off that come from that drop again over there right then i said oh oh there's santa coming so what do you think about that person who was dressed up as santa and because he was kind of a he was because you were out in the right in the right. bush. Right, was in the middle, and it's danger. Now that Santa Claus coming, the OVCs and the enemy, they don't you want to call them. They see Santa coming. They, they could see him all right. He's they dead. see him. He's there. They never shot at him, but they know. We know they're there watching everything going on. And they're probably thinking, "What the heck?" That's what they <laughs> What the? Unless somebody knew. Some of the American habits of Santa Claus and that, then they would say, hey, Santa can play over there. So tell me, have, were you ever in the war zone during Vietnam, during uh, Christmas? Yep. Did you, we, did you ever see Santa? I never saw Santa where I was. Uh, so, uh, so what was it, I right, first, Winston, what was, what was Christmas like at war? How, you know, how did you feel about being in the war zone? away from your family at Christmas? Well, as far as my, my feeling was, is um, I know how to say it. It's just that you don't have that feeling you would when you're at home. It's just that you're there, and you know you're there, and you pulled your back here, and they're saying, of course, at that time, they had all them demonstrations that yeah. they hated those people right. and, and that's that was the worst part coming back so did it was it good to see but did it make when that santa claus landed on his with his huey uh and uh did that did that make you feel good just for a moment yes to see his santa come off that chopper because they said he, i had to clear that area make sure Everybody's out there that's going to be protecting Santa too, you know, and from the perimeter. And Mister, you, you, you know, Charlie's out there. He's watching too. Yep. So the first, your your first tour of duty was with the uh, first was, air cav. Yeah, it was the first air cav air mobile. Yes. And then you were with the Americal Division. Americal Division was second tour. Right. Now, what about Eugene? How did you? You're a farm boy from uh, Evansville. Um, how did it feel of being away from home and in harm's way during Christmas? It, it felt, you know, we, of course, you know, the first time we ever, a lot of us ever went away from home is when we got drafted. Right. Yeah. A lot of us never got out of Vermont. <laughs> so here we were thousands of miles away and it, it was, you know, missed the snow and the tree and the family, you know, and missed that big meal we were going to have because, yeah. you know, the meal we got yep. at Christmas oh, yeah. is, it was, <laughs> Kind of cold, and the, right. I think it was that during line. monsoon yes. season, right? And so everything was wet, and you just squeezed the water out of the bread. So, what did they it. give you for Christmas for to eat? Was it they, a Christmas they, meal? They had the pretty some of the, If you had a pretty good safe there, yeah, you had a good meal. They yeah. really had. Yeah. They really put it on. Yeah, the they soil. brought it out to you out in the field. Right out where there, you, where you, yeah. they came in, let you say, with yeah. a big Huey. Everything they come in with yep. it, and they have all the lines set up. Yep. They said, Now you'll see some wild boar coming. Yeah, <laughs> and they did come through your yeah. chat line. And while you're going through, and they said, Whatever you do, don't try to go like this to them. Oh, the wild boar, yeah, right. I never saw come. any, yeah. No, they did not. Area we said in uh, Anke and the one in Chula, okay. and coming through the chat line, they said. Don't pay no mind to them. They'll just go up by and they'll drop something and they'll pick it up. <laughs> so but, who were you, who were you with, Gene? What? 25th Division. 25th yeah, uh, Army. Yeah, yeah yes. Army 1st, 27 Wolfhound. And where were you uh, stationed? We were dear Coochie, Daltang, you know, the rubber plantation right. in that area. Um, so did you ever, did you, did you ever yourself play Santa? in Vietnam, or did you start playing when you got home? It's when I got home. Right. Yeah. All right, so um, so uh, with Vietnam, 
Uh, did that, do you think in any, do you think the experience you had in Vietnam, including seeing Santa, helped you want to be Santa here? Yes, it, it, it was pretty good. I didn't, I enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed playing that Santa and you, and you come back here, same. You made somebody happy. Then the, these young kids come in. Is somebody happy? They're already scared to death, anyways, right. and they're looking forward to you. Right. And you play the part, and you keep going. Right. And you went on. You've led a. Uh, uh, you went on to led a long career. While well, you're a retired yeah, army I'm, man, but you're also many years you were a law man. Yeah, I was in a career in, in 1952. And I was in a, ended on Heartbreak Bridge on that one. Right. Then it was Vietnam, 60, 65, 66, and 68, 69. And you were an old man in Vietnam, right? They called me. I was the old guy, according to the young kids. Hell, I was only, what, 30 years old? But Especially to you, in Vietnam, you, yeah. Yeah, now yeah. How, how old were you in Vietnam? 19. 19, yeah. so what would you have been thinking about an old... Well, An old man like him. Yeah. Well, we needed an old man to direct us. Right. No, it's true. They, <laughs> yeah, we did. They look forward to that platoon target. Yeah. Now, if he tell me to go across uh, that pad, pad, paddy being shot at, he's not going to move until see if I'm going to move. Right. So what do you do when you say, okay, we got to cross that rice pad now? They're shooting at you. You're going to go. So you got to make that move first. They said, he's not afraid to go, we're going. The rest of them will join and, and back you all the way and they'll keep going. Because they know you're not afraid, you are, but they don't know that. And, you, and you're going up there first and you're, once you start, they're going to go. And I, if I recall right, you both are uh, certified war heroes, yeah. as in you, uh, you got medals, as yeah. in uh, Bronze <coughs> Star. And you, you have the Purple Heart. You took a, uh, you took a round. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, well, I got the uh, bounce out with the V device. That's for you. Was, uh, I didn't realize I was doing it. Right. All I was doing was good running back to the rear to get more ammo off the dead bodies that we had and had to go and resupply your people. Right. And the fire. And I didn't realize you are doing that. I was doing it until... Pretty soon you get these medals, you need no belt. Is that the time you got shot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, uh, that shot was about two in the morning. We just went over a little knoll like this. Coming up on the other side, Charlie was. And they had about 20, 25 people, I guess. That's what they said. And we got up there on top of the list of our meeting, I guess, and all hell broke loose. And... And I told my lieutenant, I said, they're out there, they're right there. He said, they didn't see you crazy you've been here too long. Because you just, your feeling, you just knew that it was there. No more than I said that, and I heard a voice from through the air, I tell it to this day, a woman's voice has stepped to your right, and I went like that, and they got me here. Don't have me with that woman. <laughs> but I heard a woman's voice, and I said, did anybody hear that woman? What woman? It must have been the good Lord. Somebody was watching him. Boy, that because if you hadn't stepped, you would have yeah. gotten right in the heart. No, yeah, it would have got me here. Yeah. Stepped here right now. Well, I can't get me here. <laughs> Spun me around. It's fits like it's, somebody hit you with your fist. Yeah. You've been in a fight with that. It felt like when you got hit. Well, the thing was, what pissed me off was I dropped my rifle. That was my doubt in my life. And I'll, every one of them said, that's your, your wife, your life, and that's what it was. Right. So, uh, and uh, you also have the Bronze Star, and I know, I know, you know what the thing is, Bo, anybody who gets, I've interviewed enough of you folks, you know, whether it be World War II, Korea, Vietnam, <laughs> most of the people are, all tell me, they, no, they all tell me, they were just doing their jobs. That's and, it. And they're, and yours, you uh, you were credited for what saving an officer? No, that's what they say. Watch that. I mean, like like he just said, I was just doing my job. I was heading for cover too. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. 
uh, you just rely, you just go in your instant. You That's don't it. think about it. No. You had a particularly, uh, y even though you weren't officially a ton, you weren't officially a tunnel. No, rider, I wasn't. But because you were so small, if they didn't have a tunnel rat around, oh, they'd yeah. say, yeah. Gene. And we didn't, we really didn't have a tunnel rat in that outfit. Uh, there was a tunnel rat, what they call a tunnel rat uh, brigade right. or whatever, but they never was in that area. I never saw any. But so, but they would. Yeah. You uh, and for those who don't know what a tunnel rat is, what is a tunnel? It's, it's a soldier like we had our, our, our tunnel rat. You had a tunnel rat in oh, your yeah. group. Oh yeah. Well, we know that we come across those goddamn holes in the ground. Somebody would go in there to find out if they're still there or not. Now you got these these tunnel rats we call them. This you or him, or me, any one of us who get sent to go in there to find out anybody down there hole. Now you don't know what you're going to run into. Right. And no, because you, you were even though you weren't really tall, you were you were you were yep. built. Yeah. Now you uh, uh, you've been on here before and talked about what you found, but what are some of the things that you found? Down in the mostly, mostly a lot of the Charlie and those guys, they used to crawl in the tunnels to die. Right. Yeah. And that's what they did. You Didn't know? you say you found a hospital? Or, yep. Yep. Yeah, because well, how many miles of uh, tunnels were Oh, my goodness. Oh. Kuti was the main <laughs> source there. They, you know, I mean, when I went in the tunnel, you used to go as you go in for so long and turn around and come back. Yeah. Because you don't know where they went. You know what you and me. Right. And you didn't want to come up somewhere where somebody's waiting and shoot you. Right. So you always had to go. And, and that word was when we came out, we swore like a parrot. Yeah. Then they knew it was a GI. Because right. yeah. if you didn't say nothing, oh, you man. were dead. Because yeah, because they're going to shoot first yeah. thing coming out. I figured you chased them out. Yeah. I, uh, uh, you know, I was only a very young child during Vietnam, but I've, I've interviewed a, a, a lot of you folks, uh, and I've, I've watched you know a lot of documentaries. Is not only did you have to worry about people shooting you, you also had to worry about the booby trap. Mm -hmm. Boob, yes. You know, did, did you guys? Uh, what some? What a lot of veteran Vietnam veterans tell me, they would rather be in a firefight than in, than having to worry about a booby trap going on. Oh yes. Because you don't know when you're walking through at night time or no. whatever. Now, you're, if you're an appointment, man, let's say, and uh, you, you got to be looking where these trip flares or whatever might be there. Yeah. And if you're an appointment, man, you've got the rest of the lives of your troops behind you. Yeah. And that point man, he's got to be good because he's looking, he knows. Yeah. And, of course, you got to watch out for the holes. Everything, Yes. You know, and with me, I'm going to tell you, I'd be like a bull in a china store, probably, <laughs> and you wouldn't want you wouldn't want me to be a point man, and I wouldn't want to be. No, no, nobody would. I just uh, now, how come? Anything? Anytime I talk to people, they it always seems to be they put the newest person as the point man. No, I, not really. We used to rotate. Yeah. I used to be your yeah. turn to walk point. Oh, really? That's your it. turn to walk point. Because I, I interviewed a no. number of people who said that they always put the new no, person. No, no, you didn't no, want the new no, no. guy there. That new guy don't know what the hell you're looking for. Yeah. You know, the new guy, he's going to try his best, but he don't know what he's looking for. And, and he, the new guy also was going to be uh, what you call more brave. I'm not afraid. Yeah. You yeah. want somebody who's been there for a while and say, man, I ain't doing that till I check it out. Yeah. You know, uh, no, the new guy, no. No. But, uh, and if a guy tells me not to make it in my baton, I'm going in there, okay? First thing I want to ask you when you join my baton, are you afraid? Well, no, I'm not, I don't want you. Yeah. I don't want you with me. Yeah, I don't if want you near you. You're right. Then you're going to get me killed. Say you're not afraid. Everybody's afraid. Right. We don't admit it. Yeah. But we, uh, you know the feeling. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's terrible. And then, besides uh, booby traps, uh, you also had just about every kind of deadly. You know, you had snakes. Bungee sticks and all. Yeah, you had you had you had them. You had you had the snakes, the spiders, and sometimes they would use them. Uh, like I think John Wilson, 
who's also a combat uh, <coughs> veteran, uh, uh, he talked about, was it the 12, 12 step or some, some kind of, that, some kind of uh, s- snake that would, that could bite the you and you'd only have in. just a very few. Oh, that's teeth. five stepper. Oh yeah, something like that. That's what it was, the green one. You call them the five stepper. You ever get bit by that green one, you got five steps. And then you're dead. You're dead. And there's no no if ands or about it. That's why they name, we name it the five step for any of us. I never Here saw that, one. You know it. Never saw one. Oh, I did. <laughs> a green, and yeah. a green, and we chopped his head off. And I, and um, he said, "Can you still bite you?" I said, "Sure, and he'll can." Took the machete, went like that, and then <clears throat> the head. Never pick it up. Were there other insects that red were, ants? Red, red ants. ants. Ooh. Every time I tell you, every time somebody started shooting at you, you hit the ground. You used to always look to see where you land because if you landed on that one ant, oh, red man. ant, or you see a guy stripping his clothes in about two seconds. Well, I'll t- yeah, the, are those the same thing as what they call fire ants in Florida? I don't know, but yeah, all I, I know I, that boy, they, know the you'll know when you get bit. <laughs> you start stripping. Right. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, uh, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to uh, finish here for part one yep. of a two part series, and uh, we'll be back on talk a little more about Vietnam and a whole lot about. Santa Claus. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having us. And thank you to the viewers for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice. And next week will be part two with these two fine men, a.k.a. Santa One thank and you. Santa Two. Right. <laughs>